Is dementia preventable? Well, to a large degree, yeah, it probably is. But we may ask, like, what's the one thing we have to do to prevent dementia? Well, I mean, we have to be honest that preventing dementia is a multifaceted approach. It's not just one thing. But if you ask me, I would say there is one thing that rises above the rest. But if you read the recent Wall Street Journal article titled The Simple Steps That Can Prevent Dementia, you wouldn't know that one thing because the article neglected to mention metabolic health. Now, don't get me wrong. I am thrilled that the article even exists, that mainstream media is acknowledging that dementia isn't all genetics, right? Or just random bad luck, but rather it's something we can influence. And the article highlights several key lifestyle strategies, such as exercise, continued brain stimulation as we age, right? Making sure we get quality sleep and maintaining social connections and a purpose. And of course, avoiding smoking and excessive alcohol. And this is fantastic progress that everyone needs to be aware of these, these key concepts for healthy aging. But the major factor missing from the article, the one that deserves to be front and center in my mind, is metabolic health. We now know that metabolic dysfunction, things like insulin resistance, type two diabetes, even like fatty liver, that they can dramatically increase the risk of cognitive decline. In fact, some researchers now go so far as to call dementia type three diabetes because of this connection. Insulin resistance and high insulin levels can raise blood pressure and cause vascular damage and drive inflammation and even impair brain energy metabolism. And when brain cells can't efficiently use glucose for energy, we can see a myriad of symptoms from brain fog all the way to dementia. And yet when it comes to dietary advice for treating or preventing dementia, we, we often seem, see the same old advice of you know low fat, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, sometimes even adding omega-3s. And while there can definitely be benefit from following this advice compared to a standard American diet, we have to ask if that is the optimal advice. And, and I would argue that for most people, it's not. Instead, most people should likely focus on the dietary approach that best improves their metabolic health. And, and even maybe one that supplies the brain with ketones, which is an alternative fuel supply. So in the setting of insulin resistance, it's actually a more efficient fuel source compared to glucose. You see, now there's emerging research from Dr. Matthew Phillips and Dr. Stephen Cunane and Dr. Mary Newport and others showing that low carb and ketogenic interventions can improve cognitive function in people with cognitive impairment or early Alzheimer's. And mechanistically, it makes complete sense with the combination of improved metabolic health and providing a more efficient fuel source. Yet we rarely, if ever, see it mentioned in mainstream media pieces like the Wall Street Journal article. So, so while sleep, exercise, brain games, and stress reduction are incredibly important, we must also talk about blood sugar, insulin levels, and metabolic flexibility. Another way to look at this is, is you could say with our you know, record rates of diabetes and obesity and dementia, we need to understand that we can't keep giving the same nutrition advice and hoping for a different outcome. Instead, let's reframe the goal. Don't eat according to dietary dogma, eat according to metabolic health results. Pick the diet that lowers your fasting insulin, improves your blood sugar or hemoglobin A1C, reduces triglycerides, increases HDL, normalizes blood pressure, and helps you maintain a healthy body composition. For many people, low carb or ketogenic diets do exactly that. So here's the upgraded strategy for dementia prevention. Exercise, both strength and cardio. Prioritize sleep. Stay socially and mentally engaged. Avoid smoking and other toxins. Protect your hearing and vision. Manage your stress. But also, fix your metabolic dysfunction through lifestyle and therapeutic nutrition, including low-carb or ketogenic approaches. I want to repeat that the Wall Street Journal article was a, a step in the right direction, and I applaud it, and it's wonderful. Dementia is not inevitable, and we can impact its course. But if we truly want to reduce dementia risk, we can't ignore the metabolic roots of brain dysfunction. Because dementia isn't just a brain disease, it's, it's frequently a metabolic disease that affects the brain, and that means we can do something about it. So if you want to learn more, please see our interviews with Dr. Mary Newport and Dr. Stephen Cunane. And if these videos are helpful, please like and subscribe so you'll see all our future content. But most importantly, please leave us a comment. What, what do you think about the prevention of dementia? What, what are your main strategies? What would you use or recommend? So thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Brett Sher, and we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group.